Okay, I'm Ian from Ian Taylor Trekking and we specialise in running treks to Everest Base Camp, Kilimanjaro, South America, Machu Picchu, across the Himalayas and, and around the world. But a couple of trips that we run are trips to Mira Peak, which is a trekking peak, and Island Peak, which is a little bit more technical, um, but also achievable after going on a winter skills course or um, uh, getting as much mountaineering experience in beforehand with a bit of altitude experience. So this is pretty much what the gear, I'm off to Mirror Peak, an island peak in a, in a couple of weeks, and I have to make sure I travel light, but I also need to make sure that I'm warm. If the temperatures drop to minus 20 Celsius, I need to make sure I have the right gear that's going to keep me warm and, and not get me in trouble. So where are we going to start? If we're going to have a sleeping bag, I'm going to have my sleeping bag rated to minus 20 Celsius um, or around minus 5 Fahrenheit and down a uh, 3 or 4 season sleeping bag, whichever one you can get, uh, lightweight if possible. So I'll have that in my sleeping bag. Um, this whole, the whole trip is a camping trip, so I'm going to need an inflatable thermo rest, something that when I get into my tent at night, I'm tired after walking. Um, it self inflates and then you just have to blow up the rest of the way when you get into camp. So also super important. Um, then if you come one of our trips we provide all the equipment. So you've got ice axe and um, you don't need to bring it with you. If you have your own and you like using it you can bring it. Um, we've got crampons which are going to be used in Mira Island and crossing the pass over towards Island Peak, uh, set of crampons, and then also having a set of mountaineering boots uh, that are compatible to that. So rigid soles, uh, Scarpa do good boots, Berghaus do good boots. Um, people sometimes want to use plastic boots, Scarpa have insulated plastic boots, or the Mille Everest boots can be used. With the temperatures that are that we're going to experience most of the time, these boots, these mountaineering boots, are going to be fine, and we can talk people through that. And um, some people get colder than other people. Some people get colder hands, colder feet. So it's important to talk to us uh, to try and get the right boot and the right fit for what you're going to need on the trip. So that's crampons that are attached to rigid sole mountaineering boots, ice axe. Um, going to need a harness. Uh, lightweight harness if possible and then obviously that's included in our trip and then we've got carabiners, figure of eights, uh, the Jumar device for ascending a rope that doesn't come back down um, and all of that is included in the trip but if you want to use your own equipment absolutely bring it. Um, so that's all the technical equipment so on Mirror Peak um, can be higher winds, an island peak can be high winds. Um, we usually break ours, we have a high camp on Mir and we've also a high camp on island peak which is rarely used. But we do it to break up the summit attempts to make sure if the weather is bad we got somewhere to get back to um, with easy access. But we still need all the gear uh, for a cold um, weather expedition. So I'll still have my shorts, you know it's a 28 day trip. It's going to be warm in the lower uh, regions of the Himalayas as we trek in from Lukla in towards Mirror Peak Base Camp. So I'll have my shorts, I'll have my trekking pants, a um, little bit warmer these ones, not the thinner trekking pants, I'll use these. I'll have a merino wool base layer for that I can mix and match. I'll have fleece pants for when I get in at night. Uh, I want to take off my trekking pants or my shorts, I want to put on these fleece pants just to be more comfortable. And then I'll have a Gore-Tex shell um, that I can use over in case it's windy, cold. Um, that'll cover my base. So I have Gore-Tex over shell. I can, I've got fleece, I've got merino wool or icebreaker, and I can mix and match the trekking pants. I can put on if it's a little colder, I can put on the liners with them. I can put the fleece pants, the liner, and the Gore-Tex all in one go if I need to. Um, so that kind of covers me 
from the range of different weather temperatures that we're going to get on Mira or Island Peak. So, let's slot that in. Into the bag. Okay, so that's on the bottom. Then I'm going to have a mixture of different, I'm going to have seriously heavy uh, wool uh, summit socks with the base liner sock. So I can mix and match them. I can also use them during the day if I'm hiking. I've got some other smart wool um, trekking socks. I've got other liners and just different pairs of socks um, that I'm going to use throughout the trip. So I'll need all them. I'm going to need underwear for the trip. There's some underwears that can be used for days on end. Obviously they're better because they can they last longer and you don't need to carry as much. But you're going to need, it depends, anywhere from 7 to 12 pairs uh, of underwear for the trip. Um, okay, so that gets us up to here. And then what we're going to have from here up, and keeping our core warm, keeping our feet, our hands and our, and our head and our core warm is the most important part. Um, you know, as we move into higher altitude and with less oxygen and it's cold, the body will try and keep all the heat around um, and the blood circulating around the heart, around the brain um, to keep those things moving and functioning correctly. It will use all the oxygen where it's needed. So trying to keep your hands warm and feet warm and core warm is absolutely vital. So on this trip, um, I, this is what I will have to mix and match on my midsection. So I'll have, you know, um, light t-shirts for when it's warmer I'll have kind of an um, I'll have mid layer long sleeve top I can put over that I will have a good few merino wool tops they're uh, keep you fresh and uh, don't build up as much smell which is pretty important when you're surrounded by other people so having a few of these merino wool tops icebreakers absolutely essential you can mix and match. There's a Patagonia long sleeve base layer, a short sleeve wicking layer, um, a longer sleeve, warmer um, layer that I could use when it's warm, when it's cold. And then I'll have a, a fleece layer um, to put over any of them. So I could have this fleece layer with the, um, with the longer sleeve merino wool. I could have a t-shirt under that, the wicking layer, I could have this other top. So now I could have like four layers on and then I could have a fleece jacket or wind stopper uh, when it's not so cold. So I can mix and match all of those gear, all of those tops. And then I can have I can have my down jacket, which should be 800 fill down jacket. This one isn't. But an 800 down fill jacket, an 800 fill down jacket is absolutely vital to keep yourself warm, covering all those other layers, um, and this will be used all the time, morning, noon, and night. Uh, so down jacket, absolutely essential. The Vortex layer to go over that, if I don't need it, uh, I can mix and match with the fleece, with the merino wool, and I can get a good layering system to keep. No matter what happens, that'll keep me warm. So we'll have all those jackets, so we line all that in. So then we have down to our hands, really important. I will use these um, black diamond guide gloves, super warm, wool on the inside. Um, we I used them when I was climbing Everest up to the summit when it was you know in the minus 30 minus 40 uh, fantastic glove easy to move easy to use a jumar easy to use carabiners um, and just an easy glove to work and manage and as my hand is now it's super warm rated to I think minus 30 so with this glove I could use smaller liner um, just a liner glove um, just a wool liner uh, put through my idiot loops and on to my on with my glove. So when I take pictures, I still have a um, still covered uh, from the cold temperatures. These are a lighter layer, 
which I like to, these ones I like. There's a Polar Tech fleece layer that you could use. Um, also will work and it's just trying to line up which fits under what glove. But these can be used during the day if it's a little cold, on the trek, on the way in. Um, and then you could use these or these with the thicker gloves. So it's just trying to understand what works for you. Um, and that's the most important thing. But these are gloves that I will bring and then I'll have a thicker glove just in case it's warm out. I don't really want to wear the thicker gloves. I could wear the liner with these ones. Um, and it's trying to just mix and match. So I'll, that's the, I'll bring all these gloves with me. Um, depending on what sort of temperatures, what conditions we run into. So we'll add those to the bag. Um, and hands are so important. Those, having, you know, spending money on good gloves is, is really, really important and we can help with that, getting the right gloves for you. And it really comes down to your personal preference. If you always find when you're out hiking or trekking um, and you're in cold temperatures and your hands always get cold and your feet always get cold, then we, we have to adapt accordingly. You know, this isn't a one size fits all. This is what I'll bring and this is what I've used and tested over years um, in getting it to suit me. So that's what I'll use glove wise. Um, let's have a look. So then we've covered the legs, we've covered the core, we've covered the hands. Up to the head, I'll use a mixture of different things. I'll use these sun hats during the day are quite useful. I'm trying to keep the sun off your face, off your neck, off your body, trying to keep the sun off you totally is so important. You're, it'll make you dehydrated a lot faster. You're already dehydrating four times quicker than you would at sea level. So you're already trying to drink you know, five, six liters of water every day. You don't want to add to that by not covering yourself up in the sun. So these hats are useful. Um, or also this, <clears throat> this hat here. So the brim hat is good. Either one works. Uh, peak caps that don't cover your ears and your neck and you get burnt and you forget to sun put sun cream on it. Not a good idea. Um, these are the two hats that will work. I'll bring one or other of those. And then on my top layer I will definitely have a fleece line buff. So this will cover my neck, cover anything, any coal going into my throat. Um, the air is so dry and cold that when you're breathing in at such a high rate because you're the lack of oxygen, uh, you're trying to keep your mouth covered. So this will keep your neck warm and then the buff will go over your mouth to keep your mouth warm and keep the moisture in around there, keep it in your mouth instead of blowing it out. Really, really important. Um, it was a massive plus climbing through the ice fall on Everest. One of the best things, pieces of equipment I had, it stopped me getting that kombu cough and uh, coughing all the time. Big part of I would this I won't leave home without it, um, and I can use a woolly hat, light hat for around camp at night. I'll put on my down jacket, put on the woolly hat. It won't be that cold um, at night in the tent, but some higher up it could be. So I have to mix with different layers. So I could use this hat. The buff covers my neck. This comes up around the back of my head, covers my face. I also have a thicker woollier hat for either the summit night, if I've got a helmet on, I won't use this. I'll use this one mixed with the buff, um, but I'll always have this just in case. And then some people like to use balaclavas, which can be useful, covering your mouth, covering your whole head. Uh, you can put a helmet over that when you're climbing. Um, it's a, it's a, I, I don't normally use it, um, but no reason why not to. So we've got these different layers uh, of hats. So warm, I can use two of them together. I can use the two of them together with the buff. Um, I could use the balaclava with the buff, covered with the woolly hat. So I'm gonna be covered in terms of warmth in my head, which is so important. And then hydration. So I'm gonna have three liters uh, available to me. When I go to sleep at night, I'll, I'll get boiling water into the Nalgene, put it into my sleeping bag in the tent, keep me nice and warm. Um, in the morning when I wake up, I'll try and drink the, that liter straight away before I wake up. Um, to get, you know, we need to drink four, five, six liters a day. I'll get this filled up with two, and then this again after I've drank the first one. And I'll be drinking that throughout the trek in the morning and then 
I'll refill again and get more water, more fluids, and constantly keep uh, drinking water. And if I'm, I might get sick of water on this trip because we're going to be going into the mountains for so many days, um, over 25 days. So I'll bring vitamin C, dissolvable tablets, uh, or vitamins that I can put in the water, sachets to, you know, different flavors just to mix it up. Um, so I need that. And then I have obviously a head torch with two a fresh set of batteries in here with two spare sets because uh, we'll use it during the night, every night, in your tent, anytime you do anything in the evening. There's no electricity, so we'll be using head torch. So you could even bring a spare. I'll probably have a spare head torch on this trip, two head torches, just in case, just in case something happens to one of them. Um, this one, this insulated bottle will be used probably on the summer night. I can put my bottle in here, keep it warm, attach it to my backpack, uh, so I'm, the water's not going to freeze on me. So this is really important for the Mirror and Island Peak, more so on Mirror Peak. Um, and then, let me see. So then I'll have glasses. I, have, I love these uh, Jublo Nomads. They're Calgary 4 glasses. I've used them. I use them on the summit of Everest. I use them on Island Peak before. I've used them everywhere I go. And um, just a super durable. They bend and shave. If you sit on them, they're less likely to break. They're a really good glass, pair of glasses to have, and I'll have two pairs of these glasses, um, possibly a third, depending on what space I have. So I'll add them in, and then I'll have a small towel, lightweight towel, that I can use around the camp when I get in at night. I'm going to you know, use baby wipes to wash, there's going to be water. I can use this uh, small towel. Uh, if I want to wash, if I want to have a shower on the lodge on the way out, when I'm brushing my teeth, whatever I'm doing, this is this can be dried out as well and washed on the trek. Um, super light, worth bringing um, on the trek. Then I'm going to have a bigger medical kit. Um, so it's important to have some sort of metal kit with compedes, plasters, uh, band aids, stuff that you've used before that works. Uh, but any adventure medical kit will have everything you need from nail clippers to uh, you know painkillers, if you know disparin, aspirin, uh, headache pills. Um, like for more information on on what you should bring and what you shouldn't bring, um, you can give us a call, get in touch with us, we can help you make a decision. But a, a typical adventure kit is going to have everything you need for your trek. So we'll add that in. And then I'll have, you know, Factor 50 for this trip, I'll have SPF lip balm, I'll have, I'll have soap, I'll have a nail brush to keep my nails clean, I'll have a toothbrush. So I'll have minimal uh, momento stuff and I'll have that in my uh, just wash bag and I'll, I'll have that with me on the trip. So alongside the mountaineering boots, obviously when you're climbing you need crampon compatible boots. Uh, when you're trekking during the days, you're going to need trekking boots. Um, and then when you get into camp at night, you can either stay with the trekking boots or bring trainers uh, to change into. And I just like to have a fresh pair of shoes to train in, tr uh, change into with fresh socks every evening. Um, I just It's something I, I like to do on the trip. So that's mountaineering stuff, all my kit, um, the Gore-Tex, the down. I'll have this day sack, uh, 30, uh, 45 litre, 35, 45, 50 litre pack for any, any trekking in the Himalayas or um, any climbing. Uh, this size pack is perfect. Once it has a good weight strap, support your weight here, carry all your water, your camera, your down jacket and stuff that you need be between camps. So we we'll have that. So. All in, this is going to be, it depends, if I have the mountaineering boots in here and I have bring my own crampons and climbing gear, it's going to be up to 15 kilos. I can carry a lot of it in my day sack. Um, I'll bring the uh, boots on the flight, um, but that's pretty much all the gear you're going to need. But I suppose the most important thing is get in touch with us. We have um, 
tons of experience of doing these trips, so get in touch, we can go through all the gear that suits you best, and uh, it's 